Hi everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming and, uh, and attending this uh, webinar. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to our uh, second part of the Being a Pro Customer uh, Company course. Uh, and what we'd probably you want to do today is learn about the customer lifecycle marketing. I'd like to speak about this and also speak about the role of marketing actually driving uh, customer value, which is of course lead will lead to uh, growing uh, customer value and customer uh, uh, revenue. Uh, just a couple of words about myself for people that didn't attend the first webinar. Uh, so my name is Omar Gottlieb. I'm the co-founder and chief customer officer of Tutango. And what I'd like to do today is actually simply share a lot of the best practices, knowledge, and, and use case that we've learned with working with many of our customers. Uh, so uh, think of it as a mentor. Uh, that's not going to be our entire methodology and philosophy, but mainly uh, showing some samples and use cases how other companies are actually excelling in, in lifecycle marketing. Uh, what we'll do today is, is uh, for those that didn't uh, attend the first webinar, is speak a little bit about why I become a pro-customer company, uh, then define what is the customer lifecycle marketing and speak about goals and marketing. Uh, we'll drill down into the methodology and, and the main part will be the methodology and actually the use cases and, and sample campaigns. I'll go over some results that you might, ex might expect and, and actually summarize with the top uh, five takeaways uh, that you want to take from this webinar and uh, uh, also as well uh, leave some time for question and answers. The best way to answer ask questions is simply send an email. You see the all got at tango.com. So send me in a, in an email and uh, five minutes uh, by the end of this presentation we'll, we'll leave some time for this. So, becoming a, a pro customer company. Uh, again, uh, for those that did attend, uh, I'm going to do it a little bit more quicker than before. If you want more information, uh, feel free to actually watch the, the webinar that we recorded uh, two weeks ago. Pro customer company. Uh, Customers are now expecting, ex customer expectations are actually now changing. They expect much more from each one of the uh, service providers. And they're actually uh, control the buying process, uh, which is companies now that they understand that they need to be more customer centric versus product centric. And to do that, you actually have to be professional, you have to be proactive with your customers, and you have to always strive to provide uh, value to your customers. So this is actually being a pro customer company. It's all about being professional, proactive, and providing value to your customers. Uh, why do that? Of course, if you focus on customer value, and today we'll do that, we'll show you how to do that through the life cycle uh, of the customers, your results will be an increase of customer acquisition, uh, if customer intention, and of course, in customer lifetime value. Uh, so, uh, we actually crafted a four-part series, four series of, of webinars of becoming uh, uh, a pro-customer company. The first one was about free trials. Two weeks ago, it's on our website recorded, so feel free to go there if you haven't and, and watch the, the recording. We'll cover lifecycle marketing today, and the two additional ones are customer success management and upselling, and you can see all the information in, in the links that you can actually see here. So let's uh, speak about customer lifecycle marketing. And I, I want to start with, uh, you know, the goal and actually speak about what I call the new marketing. Marketing departments traditionally and mainly right now are focusing on acquire com customers. While this is one of the important parts of marketing, and I will speak about this as well today, uh, I also want to show you something that actually 80% of the revenue comes from existing customers. And what we think is that marketing needs to take a little bit of a new role, which actually enables company to grow existing customer revenue. So it shouldn't be just about creating new revenues. Uh, it should be also about how do I grow customer revenue for my existing customer base. So something to think about when you think about your uh, job definition and job role uh, and what are the things that you can actually help your company with. Uh, again, it's not just about the customer acquisition, it's also about growing customer value. Uh, by the way, uh, there's uh, an interesting research from Howard Business Review that actually shows that uh, revenue from existing customers are, are, uh, brings much more profits than others. So again, something to, uh, to consider. 
Now, there's a lot of actually process that are being run by different department or organization today. Sales are usually responsible for the trial conversion, then customer success for onboarding and ongoing uh, process, and of course account management and yours. And this could be you know different in your company uh, because we saw that it varies. But the idea is that there's many business processes, cross functionals, and one of the most important part of marketing is actually to orchestrate this and support this. So whether marketing is leading this process or supporting it really depends on, on, on the type of your business model. Are you a low touch or high touch uh, company, for example? Uh, but marketing should be there and orchestrate the entire processes. That's many of the, some of the main things that we'll actually uh, cover today. Uh, by the way, uh, a recent survey that we did with uh, uh, many of our customers and prospects showed that actually 52% of the companies uh, already have some dedicated customer marketing uh, function. So think about it, are you actually also marketing to your existing customers? Uh, if not, uh, again, ideally this uh, webinar will give you some ideas on how to do that and how to do that in, in a better way. Um, Let's speak about customer lifecycle uh, marketing methodology. So what you'll need to do is actually, uh, and we'll focus and drill down on each one of them, is first of all, define your customer journey map. Understand the customer value, who's onboarding, who got the first value, who's growing, etc. Once you do that, you need a system to actually monitor what customers are doing in real time and enable you to actually track or segment different customers really depends on the different uh, life cycle stage. Once you do that, and the next stage is an engagement playbook. How do I drive customer value? How do I be, how am I being proactive? And what are the campaigns that I need to do that? And of course, metrics and KPI, how should I measure customer value? So the first thing is customer journey map. It's, it's all about understanding customer value. This is one of the things that I, I uh, really spent a lot of time on, on the latest webinar. I'm going to spend a little more time on this today. If you need more information, again, either view the, the, late, the, the previous webinar or uh, on our website. But the idea is that your customers are going through different uh, journeys. Uh, they're making a lot of decisions uh, throughout their life cycle. Those decisions are usually being made without you, without the, the, the service provider. For example, they need to get first value. And first value could be after one day or one hour or one week. If they haven't done this, they won't continue to grow. They, and, you know, they can continue to grow in functionality, in usage, in users, and they can always decide not to do that. So mapping your customer journey and creating a customer journey map is actually really essential. How, what is an expected behavior for a customer? Uh, and different customers and different type of customers behave differently. But what is an expected behavior for a customer that actually drives them to value? Once you have this map, you have a very good understanding about where are, my, where are my customers and what needs to be done with it. So the first step would be, again, defining uh, uh, the customer journey, and again, more information either on our website or in, in, in the webinar that uh, we've done uh, two weeks ago. An example that, you know, Mercator is actually using a good example of customer uh, journey map is, again, the first phase and first value, they call it demand generation if somebody just, you know, send an email, maybe create a landing page, but as they more mature and see and, and actually see more value, they then deal with lead management and lead scoring and nurturing and then integrate revenue cycle with social marketing and so forth. So again, journey mapping, customer journey mapping could look really different, but the idea is that you need to start with an initial value, first value, and drive your customers to see maximum value. Once we define the customer lifecycle journey or the customer mapping, the next step would be customer monitoring and, and segmenting. Actually, how do I track customer value? And we say that the best way to actually track customer value is take a look at what they're doing in your application. User action actually speak the loudest. So the minimum, you need to understand what customers are actually doing in your application, in your uh, uh, um, cloud application, and understand from it do they see value or not? The more they use, 
the more the C value, the less they use, the less the C value. Of course, there's many other parameters like business interactions and demographic, and uh, uh, we can definitely uh, discuss a more in that later. But the idea is that track what your customers are actually doing, because if you do that, you understand whether they see value or not, and where they are at, at uh, on your customer uh, lifecycle journey. The second thing you need to do is segment the customers. Actually, again, not everybody is the same, and you need to understand for each one of the, the stages where they're at and what's the situation. Again, something that I focused a lot in, in the previous webinar. Uh, for example, in a, if you have a free trial, the basic or the generic segmentation would be an initial four segments. One of them is people that aren't really evaluating you. So maybe they sign up, they did something, but, but again, not didn't do anything major. The second segment is people that stopped evaluating you. So these are people that actually got to value, whether it's first value or more than that, but then stopped. Uh, that's a very important segment, by the way. You get a very uh, good results by dealing with the segment. The third one is people that are on track. They're actively evaluating you, uh, but they didn't get to you know the full value yet. And, and the fourth is people that are actually ready to buy. And we've covered many of the, the tactic and strategic what to do with these kind of segments on, on the uh, free trial conversion uh, webinar two weeks ago. The same goes for ongoing accounts. Again, for generic segments, people that are actually never completed onboarding, people that did complete onboarding, were established, did, say va did uh, see value, but then there was a sudden decline in usage. Something is wrong there. What you need to do with this. Uh, the third one would be people that are actively using the application, and your job would be to actually push them forward uh, to provide them more value to see more features. And 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 the first is actually your champions, your advocates. These are people that actually see a lot of value, really enjoy using your system, uh, and you go, you want to use this uh, again to actually, for example, case studies and references. But you will need to identify from your paying customers who uh, as in each different bucket. So again, tracking customer usage and, and bucketing them, segment them into the different segments and different life cycle stages, that's the key to really uh, have a very good foundation of, of life cycle marketing. Uh, we've covered a lot of the uh, segmentation of uh, free trial conversion in the previous webinar. In the next webinar on customer success, we'll spend a lot of time of, on how to segment uh, actually uh, paying customers. Now that we have the map and uh, we actually are able to we're able to identify our customer status and segment them, uh, then we need to do something with them, and and we actually need to write engagement book, a playbook that actually drive customer value. And and one of the main takeaways that I want you to take from this webinar is you should always think, how do I provide more value to my customers, either prospects or customers. So marketing functions and lifecycle marketing shouldn't be about just about selling them. It shouldn't be just about you know letting them know there's a webinar or it shouldn't be uh, about letting them know there's a feature. It should be all about how do I provide more value. Uh, and, and to do that first you need to actually uh, define campaigns that will quote unquote touch the right customer with the right action and the right time. When you do that, you need to set a goal for each one of the campaigns. I'll speak about it in a minute. Decide when is the event or what are the events uh, or which stage is it? What is the channel? For you guys right now, it's about mainly about email marketing. And what is the right message? Uh, you need to be proactive. Uh, and actually, the main thing here is the goal, as far as we see it, shouldn't be right now selling. It should be, how do I engage with them and provide value? If I do identify somebody, for example, that uses just 20% of my features and functions, my goal would be, how do I make sure that they're engaged with the other features and functions that I have? It could be, could be by invitation to a webinar. It could be by sending them case studies or a video. It could be by sending them an email asking them if they want help. There's you know plenty of ways to do that. But the goal would be, did they engage? So think about when you define the right, right campaigns, again, what is the goal, what are the events and stages, and what is the right message to drive them to value. 
Some of the uh, engagement campaigns that we'll, we'll uh, showcase today are about trial nurturing campaigns, ongoing customers nurturing campaigns, also about new product and feature launch, uh, about customer advocacy programs, which I like personally, and, and self-service uh, campaigns. So let's drill down and actually uh, um, get some more details about how comp other companies are actually doing this. So trial nurture, again, that's going to be a little bit minimal because we covered many of those things in, in the previous webinar. Uh, but some examples here, for example, people that are on track, if you remember the bucketing before, people that actually do see value but are not ready enough for sales. So again, when they complete some stages, send them an email with encouragement. Great, this is great what you've done. For example, if I'm a, a project management company, congratulations of creating your first, your first project. These are the next steps that you should take. So you actually uh, um, recognize that they've done something, they reach an important milestone, you share with them your uh, let's say, uh, enthusiasm with their achievement, but you also drive them to the right, uh, to the next phase. And again, the next phase isn't about selling, it's about getting more value. So the next phase here would be, let's invite more team members and trial mobile application. So that's trial nurturing on track. It could be the same for off track. If you identify, and New Relic is doing a great example in this, if they identify somebody that didn't install the code within the trial, they send him an email saying, do you need more help? This is you know, a link to do that. So it's actually not a generic email being sent to everybody just because it's being 10 days in trial, uh, which is one of the common mistakes people are actually doing. It's about sending the right email to the right customer at the right time. Let's speak about uh, emails for uh, paying customers, customer nurturing. So again, New Relic, uh, good example for Benchmark. They provide me value as a paying customer by actually sending me an email with Benchmark status. So I do understand where I am uh, comparing to other companies. Again, it's not a generic email. It's not something saying 55% of the company are doing this and this. It's a specific email for me. It's automated, of course, because they know what I've done and they know, you know, what's the thing that I haven't done and where I am. But it's an email that actually gives me a lot of value because right now I do understand where I am comparing to other companies and I know where I'm good at and what are the things that I actually need to improve. Uh, one of the most important uh, campaigns that we see successful with our customers, uh, and, and that's an example by, by Salesforce, for example. It's a usage reflection. In Salesforce, for example, one of the main tools for upsells and attentions, uh, this is the usage reflection report, which is a monthly report. I'm sure if you guys are using Salesforce, you get a monthly report uh, that actually covers the thing that you've done in your system, the thing that you haven't done, and also recommendation, what are the areas and the features and the product that you need to explore. So again, a great opportunity, and this is something that uh, Salesforce claim again to be the, one of the main tools for retentions and upsells. Showing the customers what they've done, give them a recommendation about what are the things that they need to do. Usage reflection. So other example, again, another great company, uh, Zendesk, on a monthly basis. You get an email with your statistics, with your things. What are what are the things that actually have done and haven't done? How do I perform, and, and uh, uh, what are, should be our next step? Again, it's not a generic email. It's a very personal email with the right data that actually provides value. Another example with one from one of our other customers, Highbrow. Uh, think of it as a monthly checkup. So you get a monthly email with you know where you did good, where you did bad. So these are the things that you need to improve. Uh, with calls to actions. So if you're in a customer, if you're supporting a customer success team, I would argue that one of the important emails that needs to go out from uh, the marketing department is the usage reflection. How do you use your product? Where, where are you good at? Where are you bad at? What are the things that you need to improve? And call to action to speak with somebody if, if you need help. Another example, help your champion get more things done. So. Uh, if you're selling to a champion within an organization, they can actually use this email to identify who are the other people and users within the organization that needs, that needs help. What are the models that they've used and they haven't used? And again, these are the people that actually need help. So you're providing value to your champion within the customer to help them implement or, or better use their own product. 
And, and the same goes for customer nurturing. If you are a high volume business and you have paying customers that are off track, and again, off track could really mean different things, but right now, for example, two weeks of inactivity, you can automate an email that identify this and you know send them the right message. The right message, again, should be, can we help? Do you want to speak? Uh, uh, is some more information? Really depends on, on your business processes. But here is an example that, again, you identify a customer that in a specific stage, and you're sending them an email that will provide them value. Another important thing is about new feature introduction. Again, uh, one of the uh, uh, examples of using uh, lifecycle marketing campaigns is when you do list a new feature, uh, you actually have to segment your customers to three different buckets, people that actually didn't try the new feature, people that tried and stopped, and people that are actually adopted. And for each one of them, uh, once again, you identify the stage, uh, you can actually send an auto automatic email, but with the right action. So again, it's not, about, it's not about, you know, sending a survey three weeks after a feature was released, do you use it, and were well, you happy? Once you really know if they use it or not, or if they use it or stop, you can send them the right materials. For example, people that didn't try, you can actually try and reintroduce it. Send them quotes and case studies and tutorials. And people that tried and stopped, again, maybe they need help. Maybe they, you know, they did get the message, they did want this kind of functionality, but it's probably, you know, they didn't understand it or so. So maybe they need some training. Maybe they need some, you know, uh, support. And people that did adopt it, use it to encourage them, to get the feedback, to get some use cases and, and share with other friends. So again, another important uh, example of life cycle marketing with value, very personalized, very specific, and not generic. The next one, which is one of my favorite, is actually creating a power user community. Um, think of it, how do you turn your top users, not customers, end users, to be your ambassadors. And uh, one of our methodology and something that we're doing uh, uh, in a very nice way into Tango is identifying and recognizing your top users. So you can, if you actually know what they're doing or not doing, uh, you can identify the top 20 users in a month, for example, and send them an email. Say them thank you. Or actually, what the Tango is doing with our customers here, for example, and that's a really nice use case, we've identified people that are using Tango more than others, end users, regardless of their account, and I actually send them mugs. Like two days later, we started getting emails and phone calls from other people in those, those specific companies. Why aren't I getting those mugs? And this actually led to a lot of discussions about Tango and again, increased retention, and, and actually more and more people will quote unquote happy about Tango. So again, whether you send a simple thank you note or a t-shirt or a mug or, or something else, uh, you should be able to actually identify your top users and, and encourage them and congratulate them so you can actually create uh, a lot of advocates uh, within your customers. And, and the last example that I wanted to actually cover in the webinar today is, is, is self service. And this is actually one of our customers called CloudBees. Uh, you can see the, the case studies and the specific uh, workflow in, in our website, but this is a, a, a no touch customer that actually the entire processes, trial conversion, customer success, renewals, upsells are actually automatic. So what they've done is the same as, as I've tried to actually uh, uh, share with you today. They've segmented the pro segmented the prospects and customer bases, created uh, different stages. For example, here onboarding, established, and paying. For each one of the stages, they created like a stoplight: who's green, who's yellow, who's red and actually crafted different emails sent to different customers, but really based on the status and stage, and actually orchestrate the entire lifecycle stages of the customers, uh, again, using lifecycle uh, marketing. So these are the things that I wanted to share with you today about use cases and examples. Uh, I, I did want to spend a minute about metrics and KPIs and measure customer value, and this is you know, something to think about. Right now, uh, you're probably all measured by you know, lead to deal, 
how do I create more new customer lead? I do encourage you to think, and again, relates to the, the new role of marketing, what are those other goals and metrics that you should be measured on? Because uh, what I want you to think is, how do I switch from just lead to deal and also focus on creating value to deal, so deal to value. So it could be, you know, uh, increasing trial conversion in customer retention, in upsell rates, in customer lifetime value. There's many measurement and metrics uh, that you can actually measure your success. Uh, I would argue that marketing should be much more involved uh, in those metrics because if you do actually uh, uh, enable and, and, and execute lifecycle marketing, you're going to be one of the major parts that drives to each one of those uh, metrics. So again, something to think when you think of your new role and, and goals and metrics. Um, result you might expect, and you know, it, it's all about being proactive, and, and you see that once you do start doing that in a smart way, in a way that provides value, it's actually like magic. So you will be able to help your, your company demonstrate ROI and success, you'll be able to drive engagement, you'll be able to introduce new features in, in the right way. There's actually, again, many things that if you do the right lifecycle marketing, you'll be able to improve dramatically uh, in your company. Uh, and again, the, the, the actual results are increasing trial conversion, in renewals, and and expansion sales. So these are the things that you, you should be ex you should be expecting when you actually execute the right lifecycle marketing. But to be honest, and as, as everything, and it's something that I also shared in the previous webinar, it takes time and try. It's not you know one campaign that will increase your uh, trial conversion on retention. Uh, so our, our best practice augmentation is start with a simple campaign, focus on one stage, for example. I want to make sure that people that stop using the trial are getting back. I want to show that people that didn't use it are speaking with us. I want to show that people that you know started using us. I want to make sure that they're exposed to new functionality. All those kinds of things, but pick one, start with one, and measure the results and try new things. Of course, all the current methodology of nurturing campaigns and measuring click rates and open rates, and, and of course, A-B testing, Everything is very relevant to lifecycle marketing as well, but the difference is that my lifecycle marketing should focus on a specific, I'd say more specific goal, driving value. Again, the, the intermediate results are of course higher and uh, open and click rate, higher referral rate, and, and more public endorsement, and of course in longer term higher upsell and renewal rate and higher customer uh, life value. But Again, I would encourage you to start with a simple campaign uh, and the goal would be I want to get customers to the next step and this is how you're actually going to measure it. So it takes time and tries. Um, just make sure you continue to do that and, and success will come. So I want to conclude with uh, the five main takeaways uh, to take away from the webinar. Uh, what do you need to remember? So the, one, the first thing is again, Marketing is go, should go beyond customer acquisition. It's also about growing revenues. The second thing, and that's one of the most important thing about being a proactive company, pro-customer company, drive customers to value. How do I provide more value to my customers really throughout the, the different life cycle stages they are? The third is think of the right customer with the right action at the right time. Stop with those generic emails that are being sent one day and five days and 20 days after free trial to everybody. Segment your customers and, and send them the right message at the right time. It should be proactive campaign. I think that value goes uh, directly with proactive. If you are able to proactively reach your customers, approach them and, and bring them value, they love you and everything else will, will follow. Revenue will follow, uh, retention will follow, and, and so forth. So trigger those proactive campaigns based on, 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 on events and not based on time. And you know, my per personal favorite is don't forget about your power users. I mean, don't ignore them. That's a great tool to actually encourage advocacy within your customer base. Uh, and, and if you treat them correctly, uh, they'll smile back at you and, and the results will follow. So these are the five main things that uh, I, I'd be happy if you remember from this webinar. Uh, so 
Having said that, your call to action, let's start create recurring value. And, and once you do that, revenue will follow.